Hi there. Okay, so I'm gonna start a new game here and we're gonna talk about what is required or what I think is needed at the beginning of each game to kind of get started in a, in a good way here in Galaxy Civilizations 4. Um, I've created my own race, um, so I'm gonna use them. It's the Dark Angels right here. Uh, they have the Ravenous trait from the uh, Vestrons. So every time I take over a planet, I'll get a thousand credits and plus 10% approval for 25 turns. So I'm going to want to be at war a lot. And I have spores, which is from the Baratech Grove, which allow me to create my own worlds. Although for the beginning of the game, it's not really important. I have human citizens. Yeah. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, I'm on genius difficulty level. I don't want to pump it higher because I've had uh, it's pretty difficult on Genius, so um, I, I've been able to beat it, but it's been, like I said, very difficult. Uh, number of sectors, several. We've got these settings. Anomalies are abundant. I could probably scale that down to common. I don't think I need that many. Minor races, I like could common. Hostile entities, occasional. So I'm going to problems with aliens, pirates, and peacekeepers, and things like that. If you don't want to have to fight them, you just simply turn this off. Um, everything else is pretty much occasional or common, so should be an average. The average settings that most people would choose, I think. Um, maybe they might have less of a star system if they want to play a smaller game. But this is not even a huge game. It's just what my computer can handle, as you can see. My computer system is not the best, so that's what we're going with. Opponents, I'm just going to make it random. And I'm going to have 16 random races. So, here we go. Let's see what we get for a start. And we're going to talk about what strategies I use early on. Or the things that I watch for to kind of have a okay start and hopefully be able to do standard stuff um, with the different abilities that I have uh, and we'll talk about things that we should focus on at the beginning of each game to kind of make sure that you're doing okay okay so here we are our starting location is here a small sector there's probably nothing in this sector with me because there's quite a few sectors sometimes they'll randomly spawn here don't know Eden's a pretty good planet we're talking in class 30 Eden 1 or Eden 3 here has too many factoring on it I have a dead world here but we'll get to that in a second okay here's what I recommend doing to start of every game you start with a shipyard you start with a colony ship your first colony ship should probably be sent to uh, the nearest planet uh, in this case it's going to be the dead world because I have the ability to create a class 5 planet so I'm going to do so with Eden 1 it's now 42631 world that's pretty darn good my probe ship no my colony ship is going to go right there right now and colonize it giving me a little bit of a spiff so now Eden's looking a little better. I got decent production on my planet. So uh, here's what I recommend doing. And this is a judgment call. You'll notice my approval is 69%. I want it to be 100% and here is why. This manufacturing number, if you notice the first thing that it says is time 69% approval. So. I can only get 69% of 7 points of manufacturing right now, plus all my other percentage bonuses. So it's just, it's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be good enough. So if you have 100%, you get all of it. So obviously the first thing you should do, because it's going to be of the most value, is raise that up. So the first thing I like to do, take a look for approval locations on my world. I've got a couple right here. And they're linked. Uh, I got a tourism one that's not helpful. Here's another approval one. I'm actually going to go ahead. And I'm going to make 
two entertainment districts right off the bat. I've already got a shipyard, so we don't have to worry about that. I'll just let those finish before I decide to do anything else, because you can do that. We'll see what my approval gets to after that. I could rush that, but it costs money. We don't necessarily want to spend money unnecessarily. I don't know for sure if I'm going to have a lot of extra money. So let's take a look at that situation. I've got five people. Obviously, the first ship that I'm going to build is a colony ship. There we go. Colony ship is being made. I uh, no longer recommend making your own ships because that is the best ship that you can get for a colony ship. And I talked about that in one of my earlier videos. They used to have... Here, I'll kind of go here. They used to make it so that the colony ship uh, only took one space aboard a ship. So I would put a colony module onto a tiny ship to make it way cheaper. You can no longer do that. They fixed that. I kind of like it. I kind of like that they fixed that. It's harder. Uh, it makes it a little bit longer to make a colony ship, but that's the way it is. Next thing I do, executive order. One of your executive orders is to print money. Don't recommend. I don't recommend this. Usually, uh, it's very situational, and that approval penalty stays with you for a very long time, which hurts. Uh, it hurts your manufacturing really bad. Uh, this one's only a minus two percent approval, so this is the one I do. Uh, it's draft colonists. Gives me another colony ship, which is actually going to net out to being a bonus because we're going to go over here and colonize this other world. So now right off the bat, I have two worlds that are feeding my main world, 8.7% manufacturing, 7.8% uh, on the money, 4.1% uh, research, 13 food, so I'm at plus six overall food, which is great, um, and 8.4% uh, culture. My race gets a culture penalty, so I'm not too worried about that anyway but it is what it is. Uh, we got a probe. Uh, probably gonna wanna just send it across the map, but we'll see. Send it out at the very least. The survey ship's gonna go here for now. As soon as I can select it. There we go. And, uh... Now, let's talk about the next thing you should be looking at, which is your leaders. I have three leaders available. The things I like to look for are, in fact, diligence and resolve. Those are the two important stats right off the bat. Uh, as you can see, I'm not doing too good for diligence and resolve. This character is 476, which is very expensive. That's the one I'm taking because she's the best one I have. Um, she also has two abilities. Plus 10 gives me 10 extra control when I recruit her. And she's just charismatic. She gets plus 3 social, plus 2 persuasion, which is why her stats are so high. I'm recruiting her. Took almost half of my money. These two leaders kind of suck. This, guy, this one's useful as a science officer, so I might end up hiring her. But we're going to just hold off on that for a second. We go to your command ships, we take a look and see what they have for special abilities. I already know what mine have, so um, it's okay. Uh, all of my ships get plus one culture trait when recruited. Um, different ships will have different abilities. If you have a survey ship it, as one of these, as your battle role. Um, so as you can see, it kind of goes hull size, hill hit points, mass moves. What you want to look at is the battle roll. If you have a survey ship, it'll say survey. If you do have one, you should put a leader in a survey ship right off the bat. None of mine are that. I got two escort ships and an assault ship. She is pretty good overall. So I am tempted to put her in the assault ship. So I think I will Let's get her in there. Uh, so with her in the ship, she gives, she makes it so that this little small hull ship has 26 hit points, has eight attack, four, de four defense on missiles. Sh it'll be, it'll be a pretty decent little ship right off the bat. And it starts off here. We're going to just have it join up with that ship to get the experience for surveying. 
So now I have an ideology point because that's what my ship gives as soon as I hire up. I'm actually going to take self-governance, which gives me 10% approval on all colonies and a free leader. The free leader is what I really want to take this for. Let's do that. So now I have a free leader. I'm going to go take a look and see how good this leader is. Ooh, 12 social. That is fantastic. Not too good on the diligence and resolve, though. So I'm not going to use her in a ship. I kind of like it to be about 14 points or more between the two stats before I stick to them as a commander in a ship. That's up to you, though. That's, uh, that's a judgment call. If you're desperate, obviously, if I had all crappy leaders that didn't have really good stats, then that'd be different. I'm going to use this one as a minister, though. Uh, she's kind of best as a colonizer, like the minister of colonization, which gives all of my colonies not my not my primary worlds but my colonies a plus 12 percent so i'm going to assign her to that just to show you she gives a plus 12 percent of approval to all my colonies it's not that important though i actually prefer having a scientist right off the bat for the extra for just the extra technology boost so i get plus one choice uh, of things that i can research and then I get plus 8% research, which I prefer. Uh, Minister of Exploration is also good because it gives you plus one movement to all your ships. It gives you a little bit more range on them. I don't need one quite yet because I'm not going too far away and everything I have is pretty close at hand. So there's no reason to be going super, super fast necessarily. All my ships are kind of stationary at the moment anyway. I don't see a point because my this ship is going to be here for three turns i have three turns to hire another leader to have that role and because i gain a culture point with my race so so when i recruited that ship it gave me a culture point to spend on ideology and every time i get an ideology point i get another charge on my spores so now i can turn yet another world into a feeder world except I don't think we have any more planets nearby in any direction that I can see. No, no, no dead planets around this system. There's some Durantium there, some asteroids, but I don't see a dead planet. So uh, we have one Illyrium here, one. Durantium here. We've got a uh, Ascension Crystal here. A few, a few uh, anomalies. These are the things that you want to do right off the bat to get a good start. I think that more or less summarizes like the initial turn. Uh, we just have to choose a research. So now I have five things to choose from instead of four. My extra one is an increased movement to all my ships and an plus one logistics which is good. I think the best thing to take right off the bat is hyperwave radio though. So let's do that. The reason I like hyperwave radio off the bat, right off the bat is because, and you should have it as your first option, but if we look at the tech navigation tree, hyperwave radio opens up these two options. You'll get Xeno Entertainment sometimes, and you'll get Leadership Recruiting. Leadership is recruiting what you want because Leadership Recruiting gives you the Invite Leaders Executive Order, which only takes 10 control, and it gives you three new leaders to hire. So if you don't like the ones you start with, which currently I already know I do not, I'm gonna want Leadership Recruiting as soon as possible so I can get some new leaders. And the other reason you want that is because you want your Minister of Defense straight away so you can open up your Tier 2 ships, which I will show you right now. So, Commanders, here's my Tier 2 ships. If I can get the Minister of Defense, I can get this ship, which has 20 total attack, 20 total defense. Is an escort ship, it moves 11, hit points 52. Awesome ship. And then the other choice is Vega Spire, which... Once again, also very good ship, 12 and 8. Um, I think if I remember correctly, this ship might even get some drones as well. But it doesn't say 
Oh yeah, there it is, Interceptor Fighters 4. So that ship has four Interceptor Fighters, which makes it even better than this ship. So the four Interceptor Fighters attack for you, and they take damage usually before your main ship does. So they kind of just, and they recover on their own. So I highly recommend getting Interceptor Fighters on any ship you can. It's great. So that's what makes Vegas Spire the best ship on of those first five ships. These ships you can't get until you get Precursor Origins, which is also on that same path. So all the more reason to take leadership recruiting because the two high-end ships are even better. So there you go. Uh, now we have Culture. You should always read through all of your racial uh, policies that you can enact right off the bat because every race gets different ones. I'm actually going to take the... Uh, 20% approval bonus to all worlds with the Endless Feast. It gives me a negative 2 diplomacy, but I haven't even met anyone, so that negative 2 doesn't matter until I actually meet someone. It also gives me plus 1 food, uh, so there's it's just a win-win. So now I have an 86 approval overall, which is pretty fantastic, and my tax rate is still medium. One of the ways you can increase your approval even more is by clicking that down to normal um, so I'm not getting much extra money or extra growth yet but one of the first things that I'm going to do is get a second one of these that's another reason to research hyperwave radio because as you can see the maximum enacted policies go up plus one when you take that which is another reason why having that is fantastic as a first choice uh, all right, well, I'm going to forward the turn. It's going to go pretty quick. Uh, we might turn again back to here. Now we've re now we've actually surveyed that for a turn, but as you see, it's uh, it's going to take a little while, two more months before I get that. I have no ships to move. I can assign a leader, but uh, I don't think I have any new leaders. It's the same two ones. I only have 531. I'm going to wait until I can move that along, get a new leader, hopefully there's another dead world. I could create another dead world right there, but we're just going to move this way with the ship. Hmm. Don't see any other dead planets there, so this dead world I could convert. It's actually pretty far from my my main world though so I might just hold on to my charge until I find a good a good planet that I can pump up from afar we're kind of stuck there so we got a, a pretty decent world right off the bat so I'm okay with that so we're just gonna hit turn again researched our first thing hyperwave radio is done uh, so obviously I would have liked to see leadership recruiting here short of that we want to increase our production my opinion the best way to do that next is to probably take asteroid mining which gives us two free asteroid things so you're gonna have like a whole bunch of asteroids around your row I'm gonna send them to these two groups of asteroids right off the bat to get another 0.6 production on my home row. Not bad. I think it's worth it. There's the extra policy slot, so now I have another one. So, ideally you want more growth right off of that, just so you can expand quicker. So, anything that gives you plus 100% growth or more is one of the things you're going to want. This is probably what I'm going to take. I'm just going to quickly review the other ones. Plus 50% move. A little bit of extra influence and gross income. A lot of extra money, but extra pollution on my worlds, and security lights. So, yeah, we're taking course colonization. We'll take the hit to the approval. Take a quick look at my planetary approval. Eden approval 81%. So I'm getting 10.5 production already. The entertainment district's going to finish right away. So, great. Um, the Prometheus Stone will give me 
a permethium like 0.1 every turn if I upgrade this. It also improves my income, which is great. And then the motivation helix unlocks charges that will boost my military construction on this shipyard for a while. I don't really need that at the moment. It's not a terrible thing though, so I might actually take that fairly quickly. We don't have to build anything else. We're just waiting for those two things to finish. So I have close to 100% approval. Uh, the ship is done. So we're going to just uh, zip over here. And I kind of want to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What's the movement of this? 11. No problem. So even from here, we yeah, got no problems hitting that up. So. We'll just uh, finish doing this artifact, and then we're plan is to go up here to the space junk. So as long as I'm going to move, I don't care that it moved kind of sloppily. Won't matter. We do have the spores still. So as you can see, my production's going to go up again. See, 10.5 went up to 11. That's just from creating an entertainment district. Like I said, I, I, I can't stress enough how important it is to have that approval rate as high as possible on your home world and every world that you have as a primary world. Any core world should, should have close to 100% approval. And the best way to do that is just to make entertainment districts until you get it there. I recommend linking them because it gives them each an, a bonus to each other for being close. So it's just a good idea. And I think if you do all of those things at the beginning of your game, you're probably going to be okay right off the bat. So if you're just paying attention to what you have for your abilities and you pay attention to what leaders you get, as you see, I only have one leader so far. I probably have another option, which I do. This one's got 13 total and she's cheaper she's still got pretty good overall stats let's hire her her special ability is she doesn't forgive easily so she's got a vendetta okay well she's gonna go on a ship she's probably gonna go in uh, yeah she'll go in the slower ship because then I could bring, bring it speed up earlier because it'll get more XP faster so let's send it over to join this group. Now we're at eight out of 10 logistics, so I can hit that, get that third ship in there as well for a total of uh, 10 logistics. And uh, three good ships, get an XP. That's what you want to generally do. I also, I could print money, but I don't want to do that. As I said before, it's not a good idea. I have another ideology point though. Uh, let's see. I really like this self-governance right off the bat. Uh, I can't take any of those. Kindness, no. Intimidation, no. Worlds with over 50% approval get a plus 50% growth, growth influence, which is pretty good. I do like getting colony approval. I do like having more population. This is a pretty good path. In general, worlds with over 50% approval get plus 20% manufacturing. Worlds with over 50% get plus 15% income. Those are pretty good overall stuff. Um, but we could also talk about uh, these. Criminal ties is kind of cool because you can ally with pirates. And I actually really like the high end one here. I think it's crime lords. Yeah. Gain three new leaders and 3% global income. Harmony, plus 50% manufacturing on my home road. So that seems like a pretty good bonus right off the bat. If you take this, you want to take Harmony early so you get that bonus as long as possible. Now we can see it was just, it we're just shy of 14. So we're at 13.8 now manufacturing. So we're pumping stuff out pretty quick. That colony's coming out next turn. And we got it down to five turns already. Seems pretty good. But we also don't have a planet that we're going to with that colony ship yet. 
I could just use my spores on this planet. I'm going to hold off on that. I could also use spores over here. On this ship. So we're still just moving out. More terantium found. More terantium found. No planets. Just going to quickly go forward one day. Or one month, I should say. We got our asteroid mining. Uh, let's get rid of the little person who's not happy for some reason. Okay. So I still don't have leadership recruiting. So one of the other good ones early on, you're going to want arm shuttles. You're going to want star bases. These are the two best options here. I do like the more movement. Space elevators will eventually become important, but not necessarily right now. I like star bases best of those, of those options because that gives us the colon or the uh, constructor ships. So I can I can stick it over here, get those two durantium. I got more durantium this way. I've got some Illyrium here, probably only one Illyrium, maybe two. So, but hey, Illyrium is good. So we just send our asteroid miners to these two groups of things. Now we've got them all good. Each one yields 0.1 more manufacturing. Now I'm at 14 points just going to make things build even quicker. My, my entertainment district now down to two days and then it'll be even higher because my approval rate's going to probably be close to 100% after those after that gets built and I'll show you in a second that that will be the case. I do have a colony ship now. I have nowhere to send it. So we're going to we're going to build another world. This one's closer. We're going to we're going to make this one a good world and send in there. So two, three, four, four, two. I would have liked to see higher numbers for, I would have liked to see in a foreign research to be honest, but that's okay. Extra money and food will not be terrible. Um, yep. That's that. And four days to make it, so that's even better. There's more and more durantium. More and more stuff. Alright, now I'm going to talk... Well, let's just go forward to... I'm going to just play out this uh, star base. So we only got one day left on star bases. Uh, this is now done. We're going to send it up here. We got a new artifact. It's a your citizen. I usually like the your citizen specifically for constructor ships because it's useful then. So I just like sticky the your citizens in that. So I'm going to actually create that on my world right now. I'm going to use that your citizen to put on the uh, star base or put on the constructor ships. My first constructor ship that I build is going to have that. And I wait that way I can just get the bonus. Uh, this is still moving around. Let's move back in. There's just nothing. Nothing here, so. We're done star bases. Leadership recruiting, there we go. That's what we were waiting for. We're going to take that. My ships can now upgrade. I don't have any Durantium yet. So I can't take the really good upgrade, but we're going to immediately start grabbing Durantium. We've got Durantium there. We get two constructor ships. There's Durantium over here. There's probably two over here. So let's send this one that way. Most of the time you get two. The more Durantium I have, the better. I'm actually not going to upgrade this ship these ships yet. There's nothing pressing right now or no reason to do so, so uh, I'm not necessarily in any rush. Let's pick up our research. Uh, plus one here, plus three here. Eh, I don't know. 
We've got two research improvements already. Okay, this one at level three it will give plus nine percent to my research. This one at level three will give plus nine percent research. But if I group it over here in the research, like and make it research area, it might be better than just putting it in this one spot that I won't be able to surround with anything. Uh, let's figure that out. Uh, so this gives plus two, this gives plus two. If they're adjacent here, it'd be level five and level two. If I put one here and one here, both of these spots give research, but they also feed off each other. So that'd be level three, level three, and then I could also surround them with more research if I want. So I kind of like the idea of sticking them up here, even though I've got that big spot up down below. So both of these spots do it. We're going to surround. We're going to put research all the way around that spot. We're going to leave these open for the economy stuff. We'll probably put the manufacturing over here because this is the plus three right here. We're going to use these for the manufacturing. So I might as well just stick that right here right now. And then we'll get that Prometheum going. Don't think I need the, that other thing. So, so that's kind of usually what I like to focus on early. All right. Uh, I'm going to take another look at my leaders. Still haven't got a replacement for those guys. And six can't afford them can't afford either of them pretty close to being able to afford her but I think I'm just gonna wait we've now colonized this planet 20% decay but even so our production on Eden is now almost 20 so we're just pumping out stuff even faster. This is a colony ship. We don't want to use the York for that. We do have another planet to go to. Let's go over there. That's a really good planet, so excellent. I'm just gonna cut across here. Looking for looking for stuff. Looking for the goods. We're gonna build that shaper now. The shaper will give us. We're gonna put the your citizen in it and take the solarium. So that way we'll have solarium coming in. I'm gonna kind of maneuver it in this area so that it, if there's another solarium over here, it'll look good. I don't think there's any more solarium here, so I don't even need to do that probably. Well, there still could be some over here. Because I haven't explored it. Ooh, so precursor archives. So we can either activate the relic for plus 30 research, which would give us leadership recruiting right now, or we could sell it for money. Hi, at this point in the game, I'd sell it for the money, because that way we can avoid printing money. Because we don't want to print money. We'd rather get more colonists which is exactly what I'm going to do right now because it's up time's up on that we'll go here do we have any dead worlds up here no still on. I got a dead world over there because I still have another charge on my uh, spores I think I want it over here though, so let's see what I counter when I go over here. No dead world, so we're actually going to move this ship down to the bottom side just to fully explore that area and hope for a dead world in that little tiny patch. Certainly possible. Uh, yeah, just keep on, keep on getting the good stuff. All right, we've got another colony ship. We're going to anticipate going this direction with it. 
Look at that, see? There was another Durantium here. Both are within range. Let's build that. Mining Starbase. Done there. Leadership recruiting is done. We could take the Minister of Health. It's one. So I'm gonna show something else. So I didn't really get anything that I I mean arm shuttles I do need, but I would normally take that right here, but I'm gonna show you guys a little something else. If you hit this button you can um, select like focus on other things if you want this kind of stuff it's not the green button though it's actually the purple button. Uh, you might make that mistake there's a there's a much more solid green color that is more of that kind of thing so if you want the ministers and stuff it's actually the purple so we're gonna choose that as you can see I got my Ministry of Defense as an option I also got the Ministry of Finance, which would open up the market. The market would allow me to sell off Durantium and or buy other things with my money. So it's a very good choice to take the Ministry of Finance early. Obviously, though, this is what I was talking about early. You want this as fast as possible. I haven't met any other races yet. I'm already on Ministry of Defense. If I can get a leader which I now can easily afford these two, but I have leadership recruiting now, which I'll show you how that works. So invite leaders. Oh, look, only 10 control. I still have 54 control because I didn't spend it on printing money. Boom. Let's do that. So now it sometimes it doesn't give you the three people right away. All you have to do is click on ministers, click back here. There's the five guys. Now I have a choice of three new leaders. One with nine total between the two sets. This is a 13. This is a, an 11. Both are better than the original ones. I kind of like the 13. I also like this guy because he's got eight diligence. But he only has three resolves. So I'm going to recruit her for one ship. Can't afford anyone else. I can just about afford this person though. That's what I have. We'll see how things pan out. But... We're gonna we're gonna hold off on assigning it to the ship because we're gonna actually assign her to the Vegas Spire. Let's just do that. I don't need any assistance. Obviously, we can do more things there. I can assign the leader. I got an artifact that I can use still, which is the spores. We're sitting pretty. <laughs> Colonize the planet. Uh, can we go take the eye? We don't want to do that. Plus one deception, plus one technology. That's not a terrible option. And I'm going to choose that one. So, more research is good. Okay. So, we've moved our colony ship up here. But we have nothing. So now we're going to move it over here. And we're just going to... We're not going to... We're going to follow across and go down. We're kind of following this probe ship, hoping that we're going to find a planet of some kind. Once again, we've got two Durantium. You want to get two things with every starbase, ideally. At least early in the game. Uh, I would have really like to have gotten two Illyrium there, but it's just not going to happen. I got another Shaper. We're sticking the Your Citizen that I created with the artifact on there. We're actually going to go down here to get that Illyrium. Alright. Uh, going back to another colony ship. So we really don't have any planets near us. We're hoping. <laughs> Not even a dead planet. Be 
Walker, so normally I don't recommend attacking those early on. Oh, we 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 we're we're running. That's a pirate. We want to run as fast as we can away from that. Get our guy into safety. That's why we use probe ships. I could have just lost a uh, perfectly good perfectly good ship. I see a dead world. You know what? Let's just immediately make that a planet. We're going to go there with this colony ship. We don't really want to travel that direction. Because that'll be closer to the pirates. We're going to stay away from them. We've got level ups to do. Five Durantium, one of the things I recommend doing when you get a level up is you want to make these ships a little bit stronger before you start attacking things. Extended reinforced hull is what I've been waiting for, so that's what I'm going to take. I also will get enough to do it on my other ship. This one, we have a move of 11, a move of 10, and a move of 12. So we want, the, we want all the ships to be moving 12. I'll give the middle one a command bridge. This one's going to get a reinforced hull next turn. Pirate scrap. Uh, collect the scrap for Durantium. So I'm going to take this option because the 50 50 chance just. I want it to be higher. So we're going to take Durantium. That way I can just immediately get a reinforced hull. Let's do that. 134. So I've got a pretty decent defense if anything came near me. Of course, nothing probably will anytime soon. Yeah, we're just trying to stay away from those pirates. Ah, yes. Uh, probably want to research that from this side just to make it better so that we can move over to the other things up here. It's usually how I recommend moving. Move to the side of the nearest uh, anomaly. More colony ships. So now you can see how fast we're pumping out these colony ships. That one came out two turns after my uh, last ship, so even though it says three turns, it's only two turns. We could make another miner. I don't know if we have any more asteroids in our area. We do have a little bit there. I can wait on that, though. We've only got, uh, what, three citizens left? That's certainly enough for more colony ships. Except that we really don't have a place to put any of the colony ships right now. We're not getting any Alarium. Might as well just build it right there. There we go. Got more Durantium down here. There's another world, but I'm not worried about that. Uh, where's my ship? There he is. going. Alright. I think that more or less covers the beginning. We can uh, pick that up at a later time. I'm going to just turn off this and uh, that'll be that video. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, you know, give a like, subscribe if you enjoyed that. Hopefully it helps you out in the game. It's just the basics, but maybe it'll help someone. I hope so. Thanks.